Baltimore City Council Budget Appropriations Committee, Council Bill 20-0527, Ordinance of Estimates for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2021. I'm Councilman Eric Costello from the 11th District Chair of the Committee. I'm joined by Councilman Isaac Yitzi Schleifer, 5th District, Councilman Bill Henry, 4th District, Councilman Ryan Dorsey, 3rd District, Council Vice President Sharon Green Middleton, 6th District, Council President Brandon Scott. Councilman Schleifer, just so you're aware, you've got, you're logged in twice. I don't know if you're doing the phone or whatever, but no need to respond to that. Yeah, I know. Um, all right. With that, uh, we are doing Charm TV and mayorality related, uh, Mayor's Office of Cable and Communications. Turn it over to you all. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Council President Scott, Councilman Costello, and all the other council members who have joined the call. Thank you for having Joe and I here today. It's good to see everyone's faces um, after 14 weeks of being at home. Um, anyway, I am Tanya Miller Hall. I serve as the executive director of Tom TV, the Office of Cable and Communications. I also oversee the Office of Public Affairs, which includes live events, public arts, content creation, design, and sponsorship development. Today, we're here to talk about Charm TV. So as you know, Charm TV isn't your everyday television station. We aim to be the go-to resource for all things Baltimore. We provide live coverage of local government proceedings so that our residents can stay informed about the city they love. And more importantly, we serve as vital storytellers for the city through our original programming. During the past year, we've dedicated over 6,500 hours to government transparency, which includes coverage of the mayor, city council, BOE, liquor board hearings, and zoning meetings. Um, of that, we this time last year, we had a meeting with the council um, council office, and they had asked, requested that we provide more coverage for city council. And so last year, at this exact same time, we covered maybe 21 hearings and meetings out of the 97. This year, proud to say that we've upped the ante and we've covered about 90 out of 110 meetings. So we've had a great improvement with that. Um, we've done that at the will of still a very small team and no additional funding, but we've managed to cover more meetings for the council. We also cover. We also have about 1,900 hours of original programming. If you all haven't tuned in and watched Charm TV lately, you're missing some great content. We uh, refreshed who we are this year. We took it from an in-studio format to a news magazine reporting style. It's been very compelling. We've done walk-alongs with Janet Abrams at the Perkins Homes to see what they're up to. Reggie Moore has some exciting things happening over at Reckon Park. So we've been doing a really great job at sort of bringing that kind of content to public. We also, last year I mentioned that we were debuting a couple of new shows, show titles. So we launched Discover Baltimore, which is dedicated to uncovering the best that Baltimore has to offer in art, music, culture, and lifestyle. We've had a really successful year in bringing some the underground music scene that's been happening in Baltimore, the uh, brilliant Baltimore with Light City. We did our house and a great, uh, a whole bunch of other uh, great locations, um, Christopher Schaefer clothing, that sort of thing. And so all of last year, I mentioned that we wanted to, to create this kind of content to really show case and what Baltimore has to offer. So Discover Baltimore is well on its way in doing so. And we also launched another show called Building Baltimore, which spotlights neighborhood and community investing investments that's moving Baltimore forward. And so we did a great show on re the rebuilding of Lexington Market, um, how first time home owners can get access to capital through our neighborhood lift program. We've interviewed Ernst Young, uh, Ernst Young, Ernst Valerie, and what he's doing in different neighborhoods and the Ministry of Brewery, and all of these great programs. Also, the uh, Integrated Health Community Partnership with UMMS and the Fire Department. So, if you haven't seen those shows, we're actually showing it 
on Charm TV uh, web, web platform, and we're also showing it every Sunday on our Facebook platform. And we, uh, we had planned, we were in pre-production for a show called The District in response to some of the conversations we had here last year, which would cover the district, would cover the 14 districts in Baltimore. We started pre-production in March, but obviously with the COVID, we were unable to get, get out in the community and start to do some of that great work. But that show is going to be dedicated to all the distinct neighborhoods in, in Baltimore City. And whether we're doing walk-alongs with council members or visiting small businesses or on Main Street, that's the purpose of this show. Pe community, the people who are thinking about moving in certain communities, they'll find out where the school districts are, where the rec centers are, fire department. And so it really is going to be a fantastic show to spotlight all of the 14 districts in Baltimore. And we've been busy. Uh, we also lifted some short form documentaries, the Mayor Scholars Program. And we did a um, documentary on Tank Davis bringing his fight to Baltimore, which was super exciting. So that's in short form, like 20 minute um, short form documentaries. In response to doing some partnerships with some of the schools, we did partner with Morgan State University this year, the, uh, their journalism school, and um, worked on a program called the Humans of Baltimore, where the students actually went out and interviewed everyday heroes and Baltimore citizens to kind of bring that to light. So we've been really busy, and I really do like that format to really uh, showcase everyday heroes in Baltimore City. So hopefully we'll be able to do more of that kind of work. And in this COVID pandemic, we launched two virtual platforms called Charm TV Music and Charm TV Kitchen. And so that those two shows have one been dedicated one to music and just sort of sort of bringing uh, people a good time while they were at home. We had Raheem Devon and local talent, uh, Brandon Woody, who's a trumpet player here in Baltimore. And Charm TV Kitchen really does spotlight some of the great restaurants that we have in Baltimore. And now that restaurants are opening back up, this is an opportunity for people to tune in and see what the restaurants are up to, check in with chefs, and each chef will cook a, a dish. And those two shows live on our Facebook platform. And um, that, I mean, essentially that's it. Our goal for 2020, 21 is really to become the main communication hub for the office of the mayor and the council and to really establish Charm TV as a branded face for the city um, through our format, through our programs, and just bringing quality content to the citizens of Baltimore. So we're really excited about that. We had, a, we had intended on showing our new digital platform, which will launch this summer. It was supposed to launch in June, but because of the COVID, the agency kind of shut down a little bit. So we will be launching our new brand, our new logo, our new look, our new style for Bow Fresh Baltimore Charm TV debut. And that should be some point at some point this summer. Um, I think that's it. I mean, I could go on and on, but I won't. <laughs> if you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned, please do. Thank you. Um, council members, Dorsey and Schleifer, would you please turn on your video? Um, the president's office and I are asking that all council members have their video on during the hearing. Uh, council President Scott. Thank you, and thank you, thank you. Let me first thank uh, you, Madam Director, and the entire team over at Charm TV for helping bring us and the council into the 21st century and for all the great work that you guys have done uh, to help us with access to everything from working with us to bring these WebEx hearings and allow more people to view what we're doing as we're carrying out our business, but also working with us to partner to allow the school system to use uh, uh, some of the hours to be able to help with the digital learning efforts and for the entertainment, which is something that I watch uh, virtually. I just wanted to, for, for you really, other than that, I just wanted to ask a couple quick questions for you about uh, moving forward, like uh, where you think the agency could go uh, now, knowing that we've realized more potential in the agency uh, recently, like what other things as far as access, 
uh, and also education and even uh, branding and entertainment do you think we could use uh, the agency for? Yes, I I'm sorry, there was an echo. Um, I recently had a conversation with BBMR just to talk about how successful we've been this year and that Charm TV could do a lot more. So certainly I did, Reggie and I are talking about collaborating um, and bringing uh, Charm TV incubators inside of rec centers so that young people can learn how to code multimedia, videography, photography, animation, and graphic design. And so I think that we could leverage some of our capital resource to identify those rec centers that could could uh, have the capacity to build it inside and just sort of have a, a footprint in those spaces and then sort of use that content to build out on our platforms. So that's one idea, certainly. And again, you know, Charm TV could be the main communication hub for everything government affairs. So essentially, you know, whether that means breaking news, if there's something breaking news in the city, I mean, within these walls, within City Hall, why do we have to rely on WMAR or WBAL to tell that story? Why can't Charm TV have reporters, young reporters, youth reporters, and sort of deliver that content? I think we rely too heavily on those three stations to tell our stories where we could package those stories and push them out and we become the the main resource because a lot of people do watch Tom TV and and we are the go-to media for a lot of people in the city. So we could do more, absolutely. And then also in this virtual space, bringing some of that content to life in studio. So whether it's music, the Tom TV music platform, we could we could produce a live music show on a Friday night in our studio and bring all those content creators to life. I mean. Baltimore has a ton of talent. And so there's plenty of that. I'm not short on ideas. So there's plenty of things that we could do through podcasts. We could be doing podcasts and so much more. So I'm excited about the incubator idea and have already sort of put some meat together with Reggie and BCIT and bringing that to life. You're on mute, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Uh, I think that would be great. And just seeing and knowing how the school system does that with their young people and their young reporters, actually, one of them just graduated who I've known since he was in eighth grade. It's been a, a great thing to see. And I think that is a, a great, and you guys have been great. We've had a great year. Uh, second question, or two questions, a, a follow up to that. Uh, does that mean that I can host my own uh, Friday night uh, old school music video show? And, <laughs> and more more importantly, just want to see how you guys are uh, going with the new studio and the move and all of that. So we moved in in January and um, we haven't been in there. I mean, the guys have been steadily working since the COVID. Uh, we're still unpacking. We are, I'm glad you asked because we're 12 months away from this lease. As you know, we did not sign a long-term lease, lease with Cordish. And so the idea was for us to find a location in this period and build that out and then move into a new space. So we're sort of in a holding space with all, everything that's happened with the pandemic. And so hopefully we can get that back up and moving because uh, as we know, 12 months will go by really fast. Thank you. And I think if anybody from uh budget is on here i think it'd be good because with all the other agency moving around there might be an opportunity for us to have you uh locate with them to help with cost too uh thank you mr chair and thank you ma'am thank you thank you mr president uh we will go randomly in the order that you show up in my webex which is actually councilman henry and uh councilman schleifer if you're on would you please turn your video on Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. I, I just, my quick question was, um, what's going on currently with community media of Baltimore City um, and, and, and the public access channels? How are, how are they being managed right now? Joe, can you speak to that? I can't hear you, you gotta turn. Oh, Joe's muted. Got yeah. it, sorry. TV guy, I should know that first. Um, <laughs> sorry. 
Joe Duff, also manager of operations at, at Charm TV. Uh, CNBC uh, folded as an entity, and Charm TV, the mayor's office of cable and communications, took over that operation, and we have okay. for a couple years now. Um, we put out a bid for proposal to have another similar community group take it over, and there was no interest. So in the transition of the executive director with Tanya now being full time, our relocation, it's something that needs to be pursued again. The channel is operational. It continues to show uh, content from the community and it's consistently gets new content uh, sporadically. I think it's been a little slower since COVID, but um, we expect that to pick back up again. But the, the channel is, is still 24 seven running and, and, and there for the community. So if, so if I know people who are interested in getting involved with public access, I should just be sending them to charm TV, not the separate nonprofit that used to run it because you guys run it now. Yes. That group is no longer in existence. Um, again, there's all sorts of FCC rulings with regard to the operation of the channel, but, Yes, uh, we should probably start to collect those those names and information of people and, and see how we can get something started for to have that be more community based than just coming out of our office. OK, Mr. Chair, I'll do the rest of this offline then. OK, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Dorsey. Well, Mr. Chair, I have nothing for the uh, panel this time. I'm just really, you know, I'm not a committee member, so I'm just here observing. I'm, I've kind of got the sound on in the background while I'm doing some other things right now. Um, if the committee wouldn't mind having me turn my video off, I know that I would prefer to not have my face shown here while I'm trying to write other emails. I, I, I second that motion. Absolutely, we'll keep it. To, we'll keep it to committee members and the president. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. <laughs> Councilwoman Sneed. No, I don't have any questions, but I do want to say uh, congrats. I love the fact that you guys increased and are, are, are you know, just spread it out wide and um, covered so many uh, of the hearings. So thank you for your hard work. I appreciate it. Thank you. You on, you on mute, Mr. Chair. Council Vice President Middleton. And I'm not a TV guy, but I should know that. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I, just an added note as well that I have definitely seen the stages and phases of improvement with Charm TV. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, but just want to also plug in a note as um, I serve as president of the Maryland Association of Counties and uh, the organization has not been to Baltimore since 1995 and we were supposed to have a retreat here in Baltimore in June, but because of COVID we moved it out to November. Um, right now the dates of November 12th and 13th are on my mind, but I'll get with you because um, it's like a two and a half day thing. And also, uh, Council President, I'll make sure you're a uh, part of that once we get confirmed dates. But uh, part of that includes a tour and other things of my chosen choice. And I definitely want you to be a part of that because this is a group of uh, council members or commissioners from around the state that, um, you know, they literally they have not formally been in baltimore since 95 to really prove why baltimore is still the economic engine of our state and uh so this is an opportune time for charm tv to also be a part of that uh live baltimore is a uh, visit baltimore is definitely part of the planning process as well so we'll i want to definitely make sure you're included in that Oh, absolutely. Okay. I was, I was shaking my head at Marguerite. Sorry. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, con I'll connect with you. So that you sounds great. Be a part of that planning. Okay. That sounds fantastic. All right.
That's it, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilman Schleifer, are you on? I'm here. I'm on a constituent call. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Um, thank you all at Charm TV. Appreciate all the accommodations you make, especially uh, during budget season. We're doing things a little different, but appreciate you guys working with us. And thank you very much. Uh, we are now in recess. We will be back at 5.30 p.m. for the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business Development. Thank you.